Hey guys, welcome back to another video on PS4 Linux. So many of you guys own certain PS4 models that have problematic networking while on Linux. So basically you might be facing issues getting Wi-Fi running or Ethernet running or even Bluetooth running. I guess one of these models is CUH7215B, but that might not be the only model. You might have certain models. For example, my model does have Wi-Fi working properly while the Ethernet is dead. Okay. So this particular tutorial is going to be targeted at these people who are facing issues running new devices on their PS4 Linux because the kernel does not support it currently. Okay. So to put it in a nutshell, in this video, I'm going to show you how you could add new Linux drivers to your PS4 Linux kernel by editing the Linux kernel. Okay. So before we begin, if your issue is that your PS4 while running Linux does not have internet access because you don't either have access to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a USB Wi-Fi adapter or a USB Ethernet adapter. Okay. For now, that seems to be the only easy way to get internet working on your PS4 model. Okay. Now, even if you get these USB Wi-Fi adapters, there's no guarantee that it will work by default with your PS4 Linux kernel. That is where this tutorial comes in. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how you could add support for new devices. That is add drivers for new devices, including USB Wi-Fi adapters and USB Ethernet adapters to the Linux kernel. So they start working out of the box. Okay. Now, before we jump into the video, there are a few things I would like to talk about. These are important to me and hope uh, that these are important to you as well. And you might be interested in these. So first of all, I'm going to work on Proxmox for PS4. So Proxmox is an OS that helps you run multiple OSs at the same time, including Windows. So I plan to bring or port Proxmox for the PS4 so that we slowly get Windows support for it. And uh, the ultimate aim is obviously to have Windows running natively on PS4. But this should be a starting point, right? Proxmox is a lightweight environment that lets you run almost any other OS very easily. It, it is like VirtualBox, but unlike VirtualBox, which requires an already installed OS, which in itself takes up a lot of RAM and memory. I truly believe that this would be a very good beginning. But as for many other projects, you know, this requires a lot of money. So I have set a $300 goal on Kofi and I'm currently receiving donations uh, that will go into Proxmox for PS4, the project. So if you can, if you are interested in this project and if you can donate, any amount of donation is appreciated. Please consider donating that. And I will leave a link to this particular goal in the description. You could go straight into that and uh, donate whatever amount you feel like. Okay. I would also like to thank all the people that have already donated to towards this project. And I really appreciate the support that you guys have shown me. Okay. And the second thing is Black Friday is nearing. And here I have a very good list of almost all the Black Friday deals, the great Black Friday deals that are on right now and will be in the next few days. So I do have them categorized under different categories like gaming consoles, gaming mice, headsets, controllers, internal storage. Uh, this is especially for those who are looking for good NVMe drives for the PS5. And then we also have external storage gaming monitors. We are uh, gaming headset, game capture cards, gaming laptops, both for India and international. And I also have made an article about the PS4 Linux must have accessories, which includes the multiple drives, you know, like adapters and stuff that you must have if you plan on running Linux on your PS4. Do look into those and uh, and it goes without saying that I will be earning a little uh, commission from this because these are affiliate links that you see. And it'd be great if you could go through these links and possibly buy something that you like. Okay. And that you need. I, I'll leave a link to this page in the description. Please go through that. Okay. Now let's move on. So let us not waste our time and get started with the requirements. Obviously, you're going to need a Linux machine. It could be your Linux desktop or you could install Linux onto a virtual machine. I've done tutorials on those before and I'm going to link to that in the description. Do check the link in the description for all and everything that I'm going to explain in this video, including the commands and stuff so that you don't have to type these commands. You can just copy them from the website and then paste them on your terminal and stuff. Okay, you get the idea. And as for the other requirements, obviously you're going to require the kernel source. Okay. For obvious reasons, you cannot just extract the BZ image that you get and just make the edits and just repackage that. That's not how that stuff works. So what you first require is the kernel source. Again, these will be linked in the description. You can just go to the kernel source of your choice and download the source. We will be talking about all these steps in detail in this tutorial. So keep watching. Okay. So those are the requirements. Now let's get started with the process. So the first process is setting up your system to be able to build Linux kernels. In other words, you will have to install the build essentials for Linux kernels. And this depends on the distro, Linux distro that you have chosen for this purpose. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using Ubuntu. To be precise, this is Lubuntu, which is based on Ubuntu. Okay. And if you are on Ubuntu, what you have to do is open a terminal. 
on Ubuntu and most other distros that are based on Ubuntu, all you have to do is press Alt, Control and T together to open up a new terminal. And then we're going to type this command. This is a pretty long command. So what I suggest is uh, you can go to the link in the description and just copy it from there. OK, once you have pasted this command, I'm going to press enter. This will ask for the password, provide that. And then when this prompt comes up, just press Y. Many of these packages have already been installed on my side. But if you are installing these for the first time, it might take some time. But for me, it will be done in like a few seconds. I, That's it. That's it. It's done. Okay. So we have already got the build essentials installed. Now, this particular command that we installed this build essential with, this depends on the kind of distro that you're using. This is different for Fedora and Fedora based distros and Arch and Arch based distros. I have separately given the commands to install the build essentials on different distros on the page that I've linked to in the description. Just go through that. Okay. Now that's it. We do have the build essentials installed. Now, next, we're going to grab the kernel sources. Okay. Before we do that, I'm just going to create a folder anywhere. It could be anywhere. I'm just going to do it in the uh, desktop and I'm going to name it kernel. Okay. This is not completely necessary, but I just love to arrange things properly. So we do have the kernel folder right here. I'm going to go into that and then I'm going to go here tools and then click on open terminal to open a terminal within this folder. Okay. I'm going to quickly reduce the size of this. Okay. Here we have it. All right. Next up, we will have to find the source of our kernel. Okay. This is mostly hosted on GitHub. I have already listed links to download these sources for almost all the kernels available on PS4 right now on the download section. I will link to that in the description. You could go check that out. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using white hackers 5.4.2 and 3 kernel. Okay. And here it is. Here is a GitHub page which holds the source code for 5.4.213 for the PlayStation 4. And this particular one is only for Baikal chips. But the whole process that I show in this video is generic. Uh, you can use the same process, the same steps to build kernels for any other model of the PS4. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into code and then copy this particular line to copy that. I'm going to click here. So it says copied. And now I'm going to go back to the terminal and then type git space clone space and then paste the code that we just copied. OK, and then I'm going to press enter. So this is going to take quite some time depending on the Internet connection speed and the hard drive speed. So what this does is it is going to copy all these files. OK, well, everything that you see here is being downloaded right into your kernel folder. As you can see, a new folder has been created PS4 Linux by Cal and it is going to hold all these files that you see here. OK, so we're going to wait for that to complete. It's going to take some time depending on your Internet connection. OK. And that's it. Almost 1.9 GB worth of stuff has been downloaded into this folder. That is the kernel source has been downloaded. OK, we will come back to that for now. I'm going to close this right here. OK, and then let us plug our device in the device that we want to add the driver for. OK, in this tutorial, I'm going to be adding the driver support for my USB to Ethernet adapter. OK, so now I'm going to quickly plug it in into the USB port of my PC. OK. And then since we are running a virtual machine right now, what we will have to do is come back to this little thing on VirtualBox on uh, Workstation, VMware Workstation and other software. This step might be different on VirtualBox. All you have to do is right click on this USB device and choose your device from this option. OK, I'm going to click right here. So it has been connected to a Linux PC. You could either use the same terminal or open a new terminal. I'm going to do it in the same terminal. I'm going to type L S U S B and press enter. OK. So here is our device. This is a device that we want to add the driver for A6 Electronics Core AX88772B. OK, so we have successfully identified the device identifier, which is this particular code. This is what we require the most. OK, now if say your machine has many uh, USB devices connected, this will be a long list and it might be difficult for you to find out the device that we are looking for in this case, which is this. OK, so what you have to do is unplug your USB drive and then run LS USB once. So this would uh, not show this particular device. But when you reconnect it, a, a new device will be added to the list when you again run LS USB and that would be your device. OK, in this case, since we have only four devices, it's obvious that this is the one that we're looking for. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this device is actually supported in most of the Linux kernels. For that, I'm going to open up my Firefox in your case, whatever browser you're using. OK, 
and then I'm going to type this site colon HTTPS colon slash slash C A T triple E dot net. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my terminal and copy this little identifier here, which is a random mix of numbers and alphabets. I'm going to right click here, copy and then go back here and then paste it right here. All of this code has already been given on my website. You can just copy and paste it from there. All you have to make sure is that you have to change this. Okay. In your case, it might be different. For example, if your Ethernet adapter uses a real tech chip, it might be something like RTL 8153 or some stuff like that. Okay. Now, once we have that, I'm going to press enter. So this will Google search for this particular device identifier within this website that is cat -E .net. And here we have the results. As you can see, I'm going to click on the first search result right here and this particular line will give me a very good idea about where I have to search for the driver for this particular device in the kernel. Okay. This might sound confusing for you right now, but hold on till we go into the kernel and uh, search for the drivers. Okay. So this is the particular code that we are looking for. This is what we need to install or add the driver for this particular device. Okay. So this I'm going to make a note of this code for now. Okay. And now we are ready to move on to the next step that is actually adding the driver support for this device within the kernel. So I'm going to go back to the terminal. So I'm going to make sure that I'm within the kernel source folder. Okay. This is the kernel folder, but we will have to get into the kernel source folder, which in my case is PS4 hyphen Linux hyphen by Cal. You can always check that by going into this folder that we have downloaded. As you can see, this is the folder where you have to be before running the commands to edit the kernel. Okay. So I'm going to change the directory that is CD into this particular folder. And I'm going to press enter. And then what we're going to do is go back to this folder and see if there is a config file. Okay. This is very, very, very important. Your kernel needs to have a config file before we proceed with the next step. Some of the kernel sources that I have found on the internet for PS4 don't have a config file. So here you have two options. You can either choose a kernel source that has a config file as in this case, or you could use this particular config file or any other config file and adapt it to the requirements of your particular kernel that does not have a config file yet. Okay. So we do have a config file, but this will not work. What you will have to do is you will have to rename this config to dot config. Okay dot config and then press enter. So this will disappear from your view. This is because dot config is a hidden file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the hidden files by right clicking here and show hidden. As you can see here, we have the dot config file. Once we have made sure that there is a dot config file, not a config file dot config file. I'm going to go back to the terminal and uh, within this particular folder that holds the kernel source, I'm going to type M A K E make space M E N U C O N F I G that is menu config and press enter. So this will load up the editor menu for the kernel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the forward slash key on the keyboard. So this will open up a search bar. And now I'm going to go back to this web page and copy this particular piece of code. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to the terminal and paste it right here and then press enter to search for this code. As you can see here, we have it. Now I'm going to quickly compare it with what we have seen here. As you can see, it says ASICS AX AA triple X based USB 2.0 Ethernet ad adapters. Okay. So this is the proper driver for this. It is clear from this prompt section. Okay. As you can see, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this particular number here. As you can see, we have one here. If you have multiple of these, you will have to go and make sure that the prompt here and this particular or piece of text here are the same before proceeding. Now, since we have one here, I'm going to press one on my keyboard. Okay. As you can see, this did not directly take me to the menu to add the driver for AX double eight, whatever it was. Okay. This is because the USB network adapters option has been disabled by default on this kernel. So what we will have to do is first of all, we will have to enable it to do that. All you have to do is make sure that we are on USB network adapters and then press Y. Okay. And uh, now you can press enter to go into this menu. Now we have multiple options here. Still, we don't see the ASICs, whatever AX double, whatever was there. We don't see it among this, right? So what we will do is again, press on forward slash. And then again, I'm going to paste that particular code that is AX 8817X that we had copied from the web page and then press enter. So this will again bring to this menu. And then I'm going to press one again to go 
and as you can see it directly highlights multi-purpose usb networking framework this shows me that the actual driver that i want to install is within this and i can install it only and only if this particular option is enabled that's it that is multi-purpose usb network networking framework so i'm going to press on y to enable it as you can see an asterisk has already appeared here, which shows that it has been enabled and as you can see there are multiple options right here this is our option okay a6 ax 88 triple x base usb 2.0 ethernet adapters very clear from what we found on this web page but if you're still confused what i say is press on the forward slash and then type that code again okay and then press enter and then press one which pertains to this particular number okay and you will be directly taken to the option that you need to enable so this pertains to the usb adapter that i have so if you are planning to install the driver for only this particular adapter you can disable all the other options that are below it for example we have drivers for other ethernet adapters right here which we might not use ever so what i say is you just disable them to do that you just have to scroll down using your arrow keys and then press n to disable it okay and yep that's it so i do have the driver that i came looking for right here and i have already enabled it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to press on the right arrow right here as you can see we have a small menu here i'm going to go to save and then press enter and then press enter again to save it to the config file and then press enter to exit okay and then we're going to exit from the menu config by going to you know exit menu at the bottom and press enter this might take a few exits you know like you'll have to press exit a few times i guess because we went into the search multiple times so finally we are back at the terminal okay that was it guys you have already added support for this particular driver into your kernel now that brings us to the last step that is compiling the kernel with the drivers enabled to do that what i'm going to do is type make and then space hyphen j now here comes the tricky part now you will have to know how many processors um, your current system has for example quad core cpus and there are octa core cpus in this case i have uh, set the core number to four so what i'm going to do is add one to that four so that gives me five and then type it right here so if you were doing it on the ps4 which has eight cores you would type j9 instead okay because we have eight cores plus one that would give us nine and uh, since i have a four core cpu right here so i will be doing make j5 and then type bz capital i m a g e okay and that's it before running the step you will have to make sure that you're within this ps4 linux bical or whatever your linux kernel sources folder is and then press enter now this is going to take some time maybe uh, a few minutes i guess okay And that's it the kernel has been compiled and this is a folder where you will find it i'm going to go into ps4 linux arch and then x86 and then boot and here we have the busy image that we need now what you have to do is simply replace the already existing busy image on your ps4 linux drive that is in the fat32 partition with this particular busy image that we have just prepared if you are still confused about this step i do have the detailed instructions for the same in the link in the description please do check that out okay and with that we come to an end of another great tutorial on ps4 linux i hope you loved this and if this did help you please make sure that you do share this and uh, leave a like and also a comment below and if you do face any issues while running this tutorial or going through the steps just make sure that you leave a comment below or you could also make a forum post uh, on my forums that is ps4linux.com slash forums okay i will get back to you and i'll help you in any way i can okay and please do not also forget about the proxmox project uh, if you would like to pitch in and uh, that would be great and it would help me bring uh, proxmox to the ps4 very soon and i would also appreciate it if you would look into the great deals that i have listed for black friday including for gaming monitors gaming laptops and whatnot okay so happy black friday guys i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye guys